Hi, I'm Ryan Nickel, CTO at DSA Ocean, and today we want to talk about starting from scratch how to evaluate an oceanographic mooring design in waves. You want to check what the dynamic loads, the, the mooring tensions look like in some kind of wave condition. To accelerate things a little bit, we're going to use one of the sample uh, oceanographic files here, and you can see I've downloaded them already and unzipped them, Proteus DS Oceanographic Sample Layout Files from our website. And we're going to work with the data well template mooring that's configured for 200 meters water depth. So first thing you need to do is open up the mooring design in Proteus DS Oceanographic Designer. On our mooring diagram view, you can see that we've got a data well surface buoy and, you know, uh, pretty straightforward mooring design. Uh, it's reasonably low tension. Um, that's going to cover us through water depth of, of two. Now, the environment's already configured with a surface current speed of 0.3 meters per second that tapers down to zero. So for 200 meters water depth, that's a pretty good water depth to do a static analysis first. So, um, and why we wanna do a static analysis is just get a nice profile and, and mean offset of the oceanographic mooring that we can start with uh, the dynamic loads from. So first we go to export. And it's already got static selected here, so we'll go export. Now, what's happened is it's automatically generated the project files for Proteus DS simulation toolbox. This is a, our engineering physics solver tool uh, that we use for calculating motions of things like moorings and buoys and currents and waves. It's using this quasi-static cable model to calculate the static profile. Uh, of what the mooring looks like. It's already configured with the current profile that you want to start with. And it set up an engineering model of the mooring itself as well. Now this is a, a preview of what the system looks like. You don't have to look at the preview to, to start things going, but it gives you a chance to see, um, oh, well, it's just starting off with a straight line. And that's just kind of like a, an initial arbitrary guess. And then the static calculation process is going to try to figure out what that profile looks like um, in, in this current profile. So you just click run. Quasi-static cable can take a little bit of time to calculate. Usually it's on the order of minutes. Um, the longest I've seen it run is like 10 minutes, 15 minutes kind of thing. But it just kind of depends. It goes through a three-step process in terms of in, uh, loading the imported profile then it attempts to calculate the mooring profile in zero current. And then it calculates the deflected mooring profile in uh, the current profile that you've specified, which if we go back here, you can see is 0.3 at the water surface and then uh, 0.3 meters per second on the water surface, tapering down to zero. So we'll just let that run. and it's completed. So that took about a minute. So we can see what it looks like by launching post PDS here. This is our visualizer tool to show what the mooring looks like, so we just click on OK. Uh, there's some tutorials that show how to use the camera controls, which you'll get used to um, in, uh, in, a, in a separate video. Um, but we'll just quickly ju jump to the results here. So where's the mooring? This is a problem sometimes when you're looking at the whole world and you can't see where it is. Well, you can double click on the mooring and use the mouse wheel to zoom in on it here a little bit. The other thing you can do is, it's still pretty, pretty fine mooring to see, um, change to engineering view, which renders the mooring always as, as a one pixel line. And we'll change to orthographic to see a nice side view of the mooring. Let's make sure we're looking from the east. The reason we want to look from the east is that the current heading is set north, uh, you're heading from south to north, so it'll make this nice sideways profile. So here's the input profile, that's step one. This is what the mooring looks like in zero current. Uh, that's a bit approximate, but we have some floating line here and then some negative buoyance, just making us an S shape. And then in the current itself, you're seeing this, this profile show up here. So 
This is what the static profile looks like, so the seabed's along here. Um, we want to use this as a starting condition now to start the wave loads. I'll show you how to do that now. So the first thing you want to do is go back to your project. Now note everything is grayed out. You can't change anything because we've got simulation. Simulation results here. If you wanted to change something and go back, you click on reset. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna use the final state of this simulation to start a new one. So you go to export, and I want to um, um, I'm gonna leave the uh, I'm gonna create a folder in here, and we're just gonna call it dynamic. Go OK, and now we've made a totally new project in a completely separate folder. I don't need the static anymore, so I can even just close that. Now, if we look at the visualizer, you'll see that instead of that straight line, we have this you know this nice profile to start with. It's much more realistic. Um, and for deeper water moorings, you can just run a dynamic and try to let it settle to this, but it can take a long time. And the deeper the mooring is, the longer the mooring is, the longer it takes. So. Uh, but that's what we got now. Now we need to we need do we do need to convert this model from a quasi static model to a dynamic model. We go to configuration, convert the object. Quasi static cable is the only thing we can convert here, so we just change it to the dynamic cable model. Go OK. Um, we also need to change the simulation length and turn on some ocean waves. So the first thing to say is, well, what is the environmental conditions? We're arbitrarily going to use uh, John Swap Irregular Sea State. So we pick 8, and then right-click on this, Resolve Follower Properties. We need to specify the wave significant wave height here. So we're going to use arbitrarily, again, we're just picking something here, 5 meter significant wave height. And I'm going to leave the peak period at 9 and leave everything else the, else the same here. Just, just, this is just to demonstrate. Now we need to run a simulation for a finite period of time. So we click on simulation here. How long should we run the simulation? That's a whole other topic as well. Um, but maybe we want to just pick something um, like 500 seconds for now. The interval output, this is how frequently it's printing information to the file. You could probably try to do something like 10 times less than the, the sort of the main sort of dominant motion, so you're not missing any dynamics. But point one is kind of, you know, at least it's a good starting point. Make sure you're not missing any details in the dynamics. And the last thing we want to just make sure that we have uh, wave ramping. Wave ramping is on by default and it will ramp up over 10 seconds in the simulation. So that's fine. It's good to ramp it a little bit just so that the buoy doesn't start off in a wave trough and plop into the water and create some artificial transient load. So we're ready to go. And we'll click on run. So this takes a bit longer uh, than the static calculation process. It's it, what's happening behind the scenes is it's marching forward in time, calculating all the forces at each in, at each instant in time, and jumping forward based on the accelerations to predict what the motion is. And then that allows us to get a very detailed picture of the whole dynamic motions of the mooring and the whole dynamic loads in the mooring as well in these sea states. So this will take some time, so we'll just let it run for a little bit and check on the results shortly. Okay, so some time has passed, and we've finished the simulation, getting to 500 seconds. Let's see how the results look. We can load them up in post PDS. So we're going to load the entire data set. Here we are. So you can double click on the buoy and try to get a picture of where it is, but usually I find it just much easier to go to engineering view um, and switch to orthographic. You get a nice kind of 2D side view of the of the mooring here. I'm gonna make sure we're looking from east. So if you don't want to sit through 500 seconds, you can grab the scroll. Uh, the, the scroll marker here and, and just kind of get an idea of what's happening. Um, there's also, if you right click and go plot, tensions versus time, and here we have the tensions in the, the first element, which is right next to the buoy, and you can see that, you know, well, there's some peaks kind of in the middle of the simulation. And 
these are pretty low tensions, only a few hundred newtons. That's to be expected because the data well moorings are usually deployed with a fair amount of compliance in the mooring, in addition with a, a rubber uh, a rubber cord uh, at the boundary. So it's doing a really good job of keeping tensions under control and, and allowing that motion of the buoy uh, to behave accordingly. Still, um, if you're getting you know reasonably larger tensions, it's always a good idea to check more than one realization of that same sea state, which uh, we cover in, in, in other... Uh, tutorials on working with waves and the fundamentals training. Um, but yeah, that's ultimately that's what we kind of want to look at here. Of course, you don't have to look at the plots directly. You can use the report tool. And in this case, um, we've got a, a dynamic report that we want to look at. So we go to, not to quasi-static uh, subsurface or surface, but single leg mooring. Um, we usually want to truncate the first uh, 10 seconds of simulation. That's where the wave ramping happened. We don't want anything to, to contaminate the results. We'll go generate. And what's happening is the report tool is reading through all the results and looking at uh, picking out the maximum tensions at different parts of the mooring. And of course the tensions are really low so the safety factors are, are very high, um, which is fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's lots of other interesting things in here about what's happening with the mooring. Um, that's all I wanted to show generally is just the workflow from uh, starting with a, a designer file and going all the way through to the end of looking at dynamic loads and waves. Thanks for watching.